another elephant in the room that we should talk about. Rejection. Yeah, in some point in your design career, getting rejected from a UX design internship is going to happen. There's no way to skip that. This is not another of those videos to say, hey, don't worry, don't be sad, cheer up. But instead, I'm here to offer some perspectives that why I think rejections are great things. That you should love them, embrace them, because the more you like rejections and take advantage of them, the less rejections you will get in the future. Sounds great, right? Let's go. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine, and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. It's May already in 2021. I bet many of you might already have sent out a lot of summer UX design internship applications. Right? And unfortunately, you might get a no or two from those companies. Something even more unfortunate is that you might not even know why you got rejected. But that's okay. That's why I'm making this video. To give you my take, my perspective to how you can take rejections differently and even take advantage of them. And here's a breakdown so you know what's ahead. Number one, why rejections are great. They're not bad things, so don't take it too negatively. They're great. Number two, why you got rejected. And number three, which goes hand in hand with question number two. Once we figure out the root causes, we can take a look at how to take advantage of those rejections. Are you ready? Let's dive right in. Number one, why rejections are great. First of all, to just set your mind straight. If you take rejections negatively, then it's gonna be bad. To take advantage of those UX internship rejections, you have to change the way that you see them. Shift your mind and gain a new perspective. For us, like designers, it makes total sense, and I think even more sense to take rejections positively because we understand design thinking and iterations, right? Think about when you were designing, doing your school project or any projects in general. You take your design to do user testing. If you should set good things about your design, great. If you should set bad things about your design, actually also great. Because if you can fix those usability issues before you ship the product, before you reach your final design, the real users won't need to deal with those issues. Meaning you have designed a more successful, a better, a more useful product. All you are doing here is to catch those potential problems, potential issues early on. The more user testing you do, the more design pattern and user behavior you learn about. The more you know, the better your future design will be and the less tests you need to do because you already know them. And it's the same thing when it comes to UX design internships, applications, rejections. Because each internship is essentially a user testing. Let's compare them side by side. Every time you get rejected, aka negative feedback in this testing, you are learning new things about yourself so that you can iterate the next version of yourself to succeed in the future, to get a UX design internship, to get a design full-time job in the future. However, if you take rejections negatively, likely you'll be sad and then you don't want to think about it. If you don't want to think about it, you won't iterate on yourself. If you don't learn new things, iterate and make yourself a better designer over time, chances are, you are more likely to fail the next interview or internship application. You see that vicious cycle? Each cycle is worse than the previous one. Don't do that. I know the word rejection kind of already have a negative connotation, a negative tone to it. So what I would recommend is to look past the word and don't even give yourself time to think about it. Instead, look at the amazing next version of yourself. It's right in front of you. You just have to go for it. Feel that excitement yet? The next version of yourself right there. Anyways, well, if you do, that will be a great time, a great segue to how we can take advantage of rejections. But actually, before we do, we should really understand the root causes of the rejections, why you got rejected, which leads to question number two. Why those companies rejected you for your UX design internship candidacy what went wrong in there? Seriously, there can be many, many different reasons. The tricky part is, most of the time you're gonna get this, 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 or this. Yeah, 
they are not going to tell you why. But in fact, there are actually clues here and there, along with some of the insights that I got from some conversation I had with other designer friends I know. And now let me share all of those with you, what I have encountered and what I have found. Possible reason number one, your resume doesn't seem relevant or promising, meaning you did not pass the resume screening round. If you apply for a UX design internship, after a few weeks, you just got a rejection email. Possibly, you did not pass the first stage, the resume screening. When you first applied, you will attach a resume to the application, right? And then the recruiter is going to receive those, and then they're going to review them to look at the resume to see if they can find any relevant information to the internship role. If your resume is messy, it's loose, it's random, it's not relevant, likely your application will be or just set aside and they will look at other candidates first. If there are better resumes, then of course they're gonna set up phone interviews with those people, those candidates, those design students first. Therefore, the culprit here is really your UX design resume. But that's okay because I've posted a series of how to write better UX design resume videos. Link up here and description down below. Next, possible reason number two. Your portfolio lacks polish and craftsmanship, aka your visual design is kinda lagging. Your portfolio is likely the second thing a recruiter will look at after the UX design resume. And also, if you pass the initial resume screening, the recruiter is gonna pass your profile along with your portfolio to the hiring manager. So they will look at your portfolio. And FYI, that's typically how the order of hiring goes. Back to the subject. If your portfolio does not show high quality craftsmanship or polished visuals, likely you're gonna get a red flag. How good your visual design is in your portfolio can really determine how fast or whether at all you're gonna to move to the next round. This is especially true for bigger companies. Think Apple, Google, Facebook, because they have a visual design standard. There's a minimum bar that everyone should meet, including interns. You might think, I'm just a UX designer. Why do I need to care so much about visual design? You are a UX designer does not mean your visual design skills can be lacking. On a scale of 10, if visual designers have a score of 10 for visual design skills, a UX designer should at least score a 5 or 6, not a 2 or 3. This is crucial. But honestly, I did not realize that during my first year in college. But if I do, I might have planned things a little bit differently. So remember, visual design on your portfolio is important. If the text hierarchy is everywhere, most of the elements are not aligned, there's not enough breathing room, a vibrant color everywhere, very likely, you're not going to make the cut. Possible reason number three, design exercise is not polished or pixel perfect. This one is in fact quite eye-opening for me because I got this completely wrong on my end when I was applying for UX design internships. I used to think a design exercise is to test my design thinking, my, my concept skills, to test how I would approach a problem and what ideas I might have. In reality, not really or even not close at all to put it in a more extreme term. It's really a test for your visual design skills, period. Any UX design internships that required a design exercise, I never got an offer from. Like Uber, Yelp, Airbnb, some other startups. Yeah, none of those. Because what happened was that I submitted a PDF with a lot of text that explain my thoughts, how I think, how I approach the problem, what ideas I might have, along with some wireframes, just basic idea sketches and that's it. I know it sounds super off right now, but that's what I submitted. Seeing that out loud again, it, it's ridiculous. It looks ridiculous! So if you get a design exercise, that's great. That's a great start. But then you have to say no to all the parties, get ready to DoorDash because you're going to spend some time on it. If the prom said don't spend more than five hours, that's a lie, okay? That's just they are being evil and they're toying you. So just side story, once I found out that design exercise is about visual design, I got two more interviews that have design exercise involved from Robinhood and from Apple. And you know, again, design thinking. I know what it's about. So I upgraded myself to Justine V2. I spent at least 10 hours on each of the exercises. And you know what? 
I made it to the next round. Possible reason number four, failing the app critique session. App critique is becoming very, very, very common and popular for these kind of UX design internships or product design internships, especially in the Bay Area, I would say. And uh, unfortunately, I failed them. I failed the Facebook app critique twice. Yeah, not pretty. I found out I failed app critique in my Facebook internship interview from two places. Number one, when I was going through that app critique session, I can sense that I was struggling finding things to talk about. The second source is the Facebook recruiter. Yeah, typically they don't tell you that you failed in this round or why. The full context is, after I graduated from our center, I talked with the same university recruiter again, and he told me about my app critique session from my previous two interviews were not very good. Then I was like, oh yeah, duh, I knew it. So if you feel like you are struggling in the app critique session, even if you did well in other parts, that is the culprit. That could be the possible reason why you got rejected. Possible reason number five, technical issues. Yeah, totally, there could be technical issues that trip you off during your UX design internship interviews. It's real, it happened to me twice. Remember I said I upgraded myself to V2 and I got a design exercise from Robinhood. I made it to the next round. So the next round was to present my design over video chat and it was going pretty well, but somehow it took a bad turn. In the last 10 minutes for the presentation, somehow my Wi-Fi dropped. I was not able to connect at all. It took me literally 10 minutes to troubleshoot, find out why, what is wrong. My phone is also not working. And then when I was back online, I joined the same meeting, they were gone already. Yeah, from their perspective, I was just gone in the last 10 minutes of the interview. The second time was my interview with Lyft. It was a 30 minutes interview, but we spent the first 15 minutes trying to find good consistent connection. Well, it has something to do with me traveling in Panama. So that was not pretty either. Whenever this happened, some of the interview will go into waste, right? In my example, Lyft could have had 30 minutes with me, but because of connection issues, I only got 15 minutes, but all other candidates got 30 minutes worth of information and time to get to know them. So if you were the hiring manager, who do you have more information to base on in order to make a hiring decision? Well, in this case, of course, the more information the hiring manager gets, the better. And then, well, I'm out of the game. Aside from that, I could totally give out an impression that I was not ready, I was not prepared, because they might think connection issue could be avoidable. They scheduled the interview beforehand so that I could have enough time to find a place that has good connection, or at least have a plan B for that. But instead, I got caught up in Wi-Fi connection issues, which was not really a good impression or doesn't seem professional. So little by little, it nudged them to a no. There could also be other reasons like they already have interns internally lined up in which there's nothing you can do. So there's no way to fix that. I'm going to skip that one. With all possible five reasons, root causes sorted out. We can now move to question number three, how to take advantage of those rejections, make them useful reduce the number of rejections in the future. Let's go down one by one. The solutions are actually simpler than you think. So first one regarding your resume, it's pretty simple, right? Make sure you have enough information, enough relevant information. Make sure your resume is clean, it's easy to read, easy to digest. This in fact should not be a blocker. Resume screening should be simple, straightforward. Again, I will have links up in the corner and in the description so that you can learn how to write better UX design resumes. Second point, regarding the visual design in your portfolio. For all the new grads and interns, they actually share similar roles to be honest, which is to execute, to execute design. So make sure your portfolio shows awesome, top-notch, great craftsmanship, polished UI as much as possible. And of course, the details move interaction diagram, interaction flows to show that you are a good UX designer. Make sure your portfolio have consistent layout, project to project, 
how you present the image, frame them nicely, great hero image, use a lot of white space, use color wisely. Speaking of portfolio, I realized I have not made any videos on portfolio yet. I should get going and make some of those. If you really want to see those portfolio videos, make sure to leave a comment down below. Next, design exercise. This one is fairly straightforward. You just have to spend enough time on it. Spend at least 10 hours on it, give or take. After you're done, compare your design, your solution, your proposal to those popular apps like Pinterest, maybe DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmate, Cash App, Square, so that you can know what the industry standard, what the trend is, so that you know your design is up to the standard. And also spend less time on the direction, the tactical, the strategic approach. Spend the time on crafting simple, clean flows, eye candy, eye-catching visuals. Design exercise is really a visual design exercise. Next, app critique. App critique is no magic either. You can just Google app critique, how to do app critique. There are plenty of resources to look at. That's just something that you can totally prepare to understand an app inside out. One tip I can give you is to separate yourself from being a user to be a product manager or the designer of that app so that you can get a bigger picture of what that app is really about. Because most of the time, you are the primary user. You need feature A, so you use feature A. You need to complete task A, so you use the function A to complete that task. And that could be your only touch point, your only interaction with the app. And that would be problematic for an app critique because you don't think about maybe who are the secondary users. What would they be used that for? What other layers of this app what other function of this app will be and how do people use them. That is actually why I did not do well. I did the app critique on Google Maps and Apple Music. I only use a subset of functions for Google Maps, for Apple Music. My use case is very limited. I don't use other features that I don't need. I don't use radio. I don't use podcasts. I don't even have Apple Music. I just use the music app to listen to the music that I have. So I cannot really have a big picture unless I switch my mind around to be the PM, to be the designer of Apple Music. Then there are a lot more things I can discover that I can talk about in the app critique session. Last one, technical issues. Just to double check beforehand, make sure you have good connection and recommend to be in a familiar environment. So it's less likely things are gonna go wrong. For my Robin Hood interview, I was traveling, I was in an Airbnb, some kind of Wi-Fi dropped, horrible. The second one with Lyft, I was also traveling in Panama. So it seems like traveling and interviewing, they don't go well together. So just FYI there. And also maybe turn on the hotspot on your phone to get ready to use your own data in case the Wi-Fi dropped. So you know if you got rejected because any of those reasons, then you can really fix it. The solutions are right there. But if you don't, Here's how you can find out. After you got the rejection email, you can email back the recruiter and ask for some insights and feedback. If they tell you anything, that would be great. You can also pay attention to the interview process. See where you stopped. And then the one that before you stopped will be the reason. If you got the rejection email after the app critique, then probably the app critique is the culprit. Or if you stop at the portfolio review, then it's your portfolio. You can pick up some signs of struggling. So for me, with the app critique, I can sense myself struggling, coming up with things to talk about. So trust your designer instinct to sense what seems off. Next, you can pick up some signs from what questions hiring managers were asking. If you interview with multiple companies and those hiring managers were asking the same questions or similar questions on a particular project in your portfolio, that probably means you should do something about that project because it seems like it's a common pattern that they have question on that. If you address those issues beforehand, that would be great. If the recruiter did not give you any feedback or if you cannot sense anything during the interview, when you have no obvious feedback, then just take everything up a notch. Your resume, your portfolio, your app critique, your design exercise skills. Generally speaking, it's a good practice to iterate everything once in a while. Every summer, I did a major upgrade and iteration to my resume and portfolio. And looking at my own journey, seeing all those ugly, crappy designs that I had in the past, but each one 
is becoming more magnificent than the previous one. It feels great and keeps me motivated. And this is completely free and you should totally try this at home. But seriously, try to shift your perspective, your perception of rejections. Don't reject the rejections, embrace them. Really take good advantage of them. Then you can really see the power and the beauty of that really quickly. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the own. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you in the next video. Cheers!